So this watch, well, to backtrack, I had a customer trade in um, this watch. And it was one that uh, I, I like working in trade, but this one I was excited about getting it in because I, I have a real soft spot for these watches. These Lejeures, these wholly made Hoyer white label, Hoyer Pasadena's branded as Lejeure. I have a real soft spot for them. So when I was offered this opportunity, I jumped at it and I was super grateful. Absolutely wanted to get, get in there right away. And I have not been disappointed. I've been wearing this nonstop since I serviced it, which was weekend before last. Um, and it's, it's running with amplitudes in the 310s. And it's so far, it's off three seconds. Three seconds. I love the Valju 7750 movement. I love the Valju 7750 movement. People ask me sometimes my favorite non Seiko movement. And, it, you know, I have to say, I love this Valju 7750. Just, just an absolutely fantastic movement. And they're a joy to work on. Um, hang on just one second. Here I went and got one. There it is, a Valju 7750. They are, you know, some people say that they're they're not beautiful or they're not elegant. I think they're just a, a fantastic machine design. I, I think they're they're gorgeous in their own way. But I love, you know, they're they're actually for a chronograph, they're very, very burly. They're they're simplified in a lot of the right ways. Um, a lot of the, the the really fiddly stuff is put together in a really smart way that makes it, you know, really easy to work on and work with and get consistent results out of. They're great, great movements. But anyway, so this, three seconds, people, three seconds. But I've been wearing it, haven't even been thinking about it. I've been admiring this this finish, this almost this almost gunmetal parkerizing, though I, I I understand it's neither of those things. Mm, I don't know. It has a real toolish, burly look to it. This isn't the right strap for it. It was just the first thing I found that I didn't hate. Um, I I really would like to get a notched, a, a notched taper. Um, rally style strap. I think that would look really good. I haven't looked for one though. One challenge I had was that the crown was missing. And I don't have a, I have crowns, but I don't have a black crown. So that shines a little bit, but I did actually, I painted over. So when you're looking at it, you see the black paint in the, in the ridges inside there in the knurling. And it, it doesn't stand out too much against the buttons. The bracelet this thing is supposed to be on is the same exact one that is on its brother here. My original Lejeure poor man's Hoyer. My Lejeure 7000. You know, the bracelet really does help the watch. I'd love to see, you know, to, if I could find one that was anywhere close to it for this one. That's a good looking watch too, isn't it? I got really lucky all those years ago when I found this watch. I had just sort of been turned on to them. And I just like, I swear within like a day or two, this one popped up on uh, Reddit of all places. And I picked this up. I'd, I've never, ever, ever regretted this purchase. I've never regretted this purchase. I love this watch. Absolutely fantastic piece of watchery. Some people don't like them because they're, they're they're big, but I mean they're big in a '70s chronograph way. And the thing is, their actual typography is really restrained, so it sort of cancels out some of the bigness, you know, especially with these lovely little stick hands. They're pretty thick. This one is not helped by being on this strap, which I sort of lengthened for fun. Big slab-sided case, literally identical case to the Hoyer Pasadena. 
This one had a little bit of a hard life. This one had a relatively easy one. I never thought I'd own both. I'm very happy with both of them. I think they're just fantastic watches. Uh, I suppose I should probably do the basic measuring stuff in case anyone is curious. I have people yell at me about using my metal calipers on watches, so let's use some protective wrap. These have some sort of superlative numbers. Forty-one, forty-one and a half. I think the thick is the big thing, because this watch has the thick. Fourteen point five. You know these movements. These seven seven five zeros. That's a tall movement. That's the one thing about these movements is they are the plates and everything. Everything's pretty chunky. It's it's solidly built. They weren't fooling around when they did this. It's not like Omega, with their little you know feather light you know, incredibly lightly built, you know, gorgeously engineered movements. This thing is, this is a working, this is a working watch. This isn't for fooling around. This isn't one of your church picnic flare firings Flanders. Anyway, there's that. I guess I can take the protective film off now. Like I said, they're great watches. If you have an opportunity to pick one of these up, I personally recommend it. I mean, they clean up nice. This thing was a basket case when it came in. And all I did was clean it and service it. Doesn't even have a new crystal in it. These watches are beautiful and they're timeless. I don't know what they're going for these days, but you know, they're hard to beat. All right, thank you for watching my impromptu review video.